going to be telling you about temptation bundling as a means of increasing exercise, but I want to highlight that temptation bundling is a concept that actually could be used to solve many different types of self-control problems. Imagine only allowing yourself to get a pedicure while completing an overdue manuscript review. Or only allowing yourself to go to your favorite unhealthy restaurant when spending time with a difficult relative. Or only allowing yourself to watch the TV show you crave when doing household chores. So these are all examples of how temptation bundling can help us solve different types of self-control problems. I'm going to tell you, though, about an experiment we ran at the gym. In this experiment, we wanted to see if temptation bundling could increase exercise, and so we randomly assigned participants to one of three experimental groups. In the treatment group, participants could choose audio novels from a list of 80 novels that we pre-tested and determined were highly engaging and thrilling and difficult to put down. So The Hunger Games was our most popular novel, but things like The Da Vinci Code, Twilight, The Help, these were all books in our sample. And participants chose four novels that sounded tempting to them, loaded them onto a loaned iPod, and found out that if they wanted to listen to this novel, they would have to come to the gym and check it out from a locked, monitored locker over the next 10 weeks. And they actually completed an intake workout during which they listened to one of those three novels, or one of those four novels, for 30 minutes. And so if they wanted to hear what happened next, we got them hooked, they would have to come back to the gym. The intermediate treatment group also chose four novels from this set, but they loaded them onto a personal iPod, so they could take them home with them and listen whenever they wanted. And they, again, completed a workout where they listened to the beginning of the novel. And we encouraged them to simply try to temptation bundle, so try to only listen while working out at the gym, but we weren't sure if that would work as well. And then finally, a control group also completed a 30-minute workout at the beginning of our study and received uh, a gift certificate to Barnes & Noble that was equally valued to the loan of four audio novels over 10 weeks. Here are the initial results compared to a control condition. I'm plotting the difference in the number of gym visits for the treat full treatment group and the intermediate treatment group relative to a control. So we have some really promising initial evidence on how effective temptation bundling can be, but we also saw on the flip side that there are some issues where, that will have to be worked out if this is going to be a long-term effective strategy. Final thing I want to mention briefly is that at the end of our 10-week study, we actually wanted to see if people would be willing to pay for temptation bundling devices, much like a commitment device. So we told people truthfully they were entered in a lottery with a decent shot of winning uh, an iPod that was preloaded with an audio novel of their choice. And so this was a real decision that they're making. If they win this iPod, we'll really put it into effect. We asked them, how much would they pay us to take away the iPod for a month, lock it at the gym in a monitored locker, and make sure they, could, they only used it while working out? So how much will they pay us to take away a possession they could otherwise use freely? So normative models would say they should actually request that we pay them to do this. And in fact, 61% were willing to pay us to take away their own possession and lock it at the gym. And on average, they would pay us about $7. So that suggests there is a commercial market for temptation bundling devices. Mm -hmm.